Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for logging in this morning to our exciting um, first apprenticeship um, talk this morning. And this is um, from APT, who have kindly uh, joined our uh, apprenticeship week, and they will be talking about the uh, architecture uh, field as a career. They'll also be talking about um, how they work and the um, exciting opportunity they have, which is the degree apprenticeship vacancy they have. Um, and um, just to let you all know, if you have any questions, could you add them on the chat um, conversation? And I will get these questions out to uh, apt at the end of this presentation. So feel free to add your questions. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, ask um, Apt to start their presentation and I think it's over to Jason. Thank you very much, Ravinda. Um, hello everybody, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, my name is Jason, uh, Jason Gein. I'm a director and architect with the uh, architectural studio of Apt. Um, today is a very exciting day for us as we launched the APT Apprenticeship Initiative to mark the beginning of National Apprenticeship Week. Um, we've got a structured series of presentations, which should take hopefully about 30 minutes. We'd like to tell you a little bit about who APT are as a business. We'd like to talk to you about what an architect does, the training to become an architect, but primarily we'd like to talk today about the launch of the APT Apprenticeship. We are looking for candidates to come and join us, to come and join our business, and uh, we would like to reach out and say hello today and to see if somebody would like to come and join us on this journey. Um, we've got some presentations. I will bring that up in a moment. But on the call this afternoon are myself and my colleagues Declan and Thomas, who've recently completed their college education and joined the APT business. Uh, they'll give a 10 minute talk on their life in architecture to date. Also on the call, the call are Diana, our office manager, and also Glyn, who's been instrumental to date in getting us to this point. So welcome to everybody and thank you so much for getting us to this point. Perhaps most importantly on the call will be Sammy, Sammy Shumo from London South Bank University. Sammy is the group director of the apprenticeship program at the university and we're thrilled to have Sammy here with us, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about the apprenticeship course at the university, entry requirements and what happens next. So that's, a little bit about us. I'm about now to try and launch the tech. This is where it all could go wrong, so please bear with me. Right, do we have a full screen up? Yes. Yeah. Jason, I'm not sure if you can hear us. You seem to have frozen. Yeah, he's not, can't hear his voice. It might be better just reloading that. No, has the volume gone? No, I think it would probably, it's probably just resetting Ravinda. Okay. Yeah. Give another 20 seconds. Okay, just give it a few seconds, everyone. Should be there. But yes, thanks for uh, joining. If, if you have just joined us, everyone, we're just making a start on the APT apprenticeship uh, presentation today. Um, remember to keep your questions to the end of the session, and I will put your questions forward to the panel, and they can answer them then. Uh, Diana or um, Ravinda, do you want me and Declan to go next if Jason's having some... Yeah, actually, that might be the best thing to do. Yes, is that OK if you can do that? Yeah, that, that should be fine. And then Jason can, yeah, he can come back. Great, thank you. OK. 
So just to reintroduce um, Thomas and Declan, as Jason was saying, Jason is a studio leader at APT. Um, he's been with the company since the very beginning of its formation, um, and he's a director and um, the lead at APT. Um, Declan and Thomas um, joined us as part two, having completed their part two studies, um, which is a level seven in apprenticeships. Um, and they're going to talk about their experiences in architecture and uh, their experiences as students in, in architecture. OK, go ahead. Cool. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Yes, yeah, so we're yeah, just free, free, free. Oh, I'm getting a bit of feedback. Um, so, um, there's three sections of our um, content. So we've got our life before apps, um, what we're working on currently, and then kind of what is architecture and what it can be. So I would just like to say APT is a diverse studio full of different nationalities and different backgrounds. And this is just a brief history of mine and Tom's kind of background. I'm from Wolverhampton originally. I studied in Belfast. I ended up going back to Birmingham to do my part one placement and then went back to Belfast for my master's and now I'm in London working for APT. And then Thomas, different to me, he's from just outside London, Richmond area. He went to uni in Newcastle, Northumbria. He went, then went to Stevenage to do his part one, ended up in Oxford Brooks for his uni, and now he's also out with us. And I'd just like to point out, you guys who are local to London do offer a very unique kind of stance, because as apps, we are very diverse. But we don't have many Londoners or many locals to London, so you will really help out to kind of strengthen in this aspect and actually provide a point of view that'd be really useful for us because we have a lot of projects in London. So having someone who has a lot of experience as a resident or living here is, is really great. So my part one experience is in Birmingham working for Intervention Architecture and it's a slightly different scale to APT. It was very small scale extensions and but I really learned what happens when my, but this is my first complete project where I turn a sketch and the reality is of turning the sketch into an actual building, what that means. And then working on the small scale, I then translated it into uni, my university work and used the skills I learned at school, using my art and my, um, my art skills and actually using that to my advantage at university and looking at creating intimate spaces via hand drawings and just understanding the core like, essence of using hand drawings as a way to design. I think it's really important. I think you guys transferring your skills over into your experience and university will really benefit you. Hi, yeah, I'm, um, I'm Tom. And I think one of the main things I learned when I was about your age was that I started to get really interested in how you could put stuff together and, and build things. And this is sort of a similar time to when Declan was uh, doing his first even larger scale uh, project than me. But it was like a small project um, in the sort of the woods. And, you know, I think for me, this is part of what architecture is exciting and why it's a really good career to be in is because you get to see real things built all, all the time um, and sort of have fun whilst you're doing it. I don't think there's many other um, uh, uh, yeah, many other jobs where you, you get that sort of experience. And uh, if Declan is okay to go to the next slide. And this is from my master's project, and it's kind of taking a lot of those philosophies of understanding how you put things together and how you can draw and sort of really create a, a, a sort of a suggested building and use model making as well to inspire that. And so that led me here to APT, where they really value those skills of drawing and model making being able to understand and articulate how design can get put together. Um, yeah, and if you want to go on to the, the next one. Cool, the next is just going to be a brief kind of intro into what we're currently working on. So for me, I'm working on um, the Boundary St John's Wood, which is a kind of a high-end residential apartment scheme. And it's looking, it's highlight getting high-end apartments for elderly residents of the area who still want that luxury apartment and want a really good lifestyle but also might need some assisted live, living care so some nurses and some facilities on site where they can get help and the, their health begins to deteriorate so it's really trying to create a really high-end apartments and you can see so it's located in St John's Wood 
and it overlooks Lord's Cricket Ground. So a big element of this project is making sure the tall element you see here is actually taking use of these views and overlooking the cricket ground. And then you've got the lower element on the on the side where the cursor is, which is kind of the main residential block. And this is actually a sketch Jason done early on in the feasibility process of the project. You can see the kind of the main core of the project is this um, masonry building and the different apartments. And the site's really complex because there's so many surrounding buildings and it's residential buildings and it's just about not overlooking people, people's apartments. So you can get these stepped views and still getting the views out from the, uh, the pavilion and overlooking the Lord's Creek ground. And you can still see even after years in practice, Jason's skills of hand drawing is still in, really embedded in apt, and it's really important to not lose those core skills that you do learn at school. Again, these are uh, the two different aspects of the project. You've got the large element overlooking Lords, which is a precast um, kind of panelled building, and you've got the masonry um, aspect of the, the site here with the different apartments overlooking each other. And I've worked on uh, two projects since being an apt, and this is the one that I've spent most of my time on. It's a, it's a different project to, to Declan's in a way. Um, it's an affordable uh, housing uh, sort of block of uh, flats and houses uh, right near Tottenham Court Road. And I think some of the most exciting aspect for me to work on this um, is the fact that it's being built now. I mean, these are both pictures that I took on site, I think, at the beginning of November or mid-November. And all those little things that you've drawn and you've like pictured how you might put together, you get to see it really come together. Um, and also there's loads of little details. I mean, it's existing building. So there's a challenge of how do you treat stuff that you don't necessarily know what's there or how it's built or put together, as well as how do you make sure, particularly with an affordable, affordable housing, housing building, building, that you that keep really good design when the, sometimes the, the cost of the project isn't massive. And really fighting to ensure that there is good design and that people who will go into there will be able to experience that. And that's really important that you bring that um, as an architect to the project. And the other projects that I'm working on um, is the London Resort, which is uh, on the next slide. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, there we go. So this is like a new project so it's um, over in East London, sort of near Essex, and you might have heard about it. It's been in the newspapers recently as uh, London's new theme park. And we've had a sort of a big role to play on how not so much the theme park of aspect of this can be put together, but all the other different use buildings. And I think what's amazing about this project is because we're in it from a really early stage, you know, we have control about how some of these aspects look as well as how there can be a massive positive effect on the, the local community and provide a lot of jobs. And I think as well, this sort of shows between the three projects uh, between myself and Declan shows how diverse sort of what you might do as apt it. Um, and there's all different elements within that. Um, and this is kind of leads us onto our third section of what can architecture be? Now, these aren't necessarily projects that app do, but there's certainly a lot of thinking that goes into them, which we, we try to use and which you'll be able to try to use. So on the left here is a, a very small house by a, a Japanese architect, which is all about creating this space that sort of sculpted it around uh, how a family might move and how they can play with their children. And on the right here is um, some of you might uh, know or, or, or maybe not is actually uh, by Thomas Heverwick. And it's a, a Maggie Center, which is for uh, cancer patients in a way that makes them not feel like a patient, but a human being that can be in a warm environment. And these are two sort of ways you can maybe think about how you create intimacy. And uh, just to show how diverse architects can be, the same Maggie Centre, the same architects also made this, which was an exhibition pavilion to display um, a variety of different seeds from uh, Kew Gardens, who some of you may know. And it's kind of a display of how can you make something look as beautiful as possible in a really interesting way. Uh, other things that architects can also do is, um, for example, the African American Museum, by David Ajay, which is all about a cultural experience and a cultural impression in America and um, particularly poignant and sort of present at this moment in time as celebrating 
African American uh, Americanism and also talking about sort of a cultural way but in a much smaller scale is a sort of social engineering project by uh, Jan Katin, I'm afraid I've probably said that wrong, which is about trying to make a small sale community impact and getting the local community excited by design. Um, we also have some like drawings by an artist called Nigel Peake and I think what both me and Declan have got from this is how art can inform architecture and it's not just about producing buildings but trying to create an experience and that might be about a city or a landscape but kind of embodying these sort of bigger ideas into design um, and that can be taken all the way from the scale of the building as well as to the materials that you use and this is an engineering project which was all about how you can take these really fine geometrical principles and connect them together and display um, which in this case is marble in, in Italy and sort of them display it to its best of its ability um, and that can be also taken down to the smallest possible scale so you will find some architects who uh, will do chairs and lights and I know at apt we've done uh, handles uh, door handles uh, as well as doors really to try and create a full sort of experience of people entering the space and this is why we also need you because hopefully throughout our presentation you can see that both me and Declan have had different experiences we have both uh, different passions but you know most of all we need this wide range and we sort of come together as a, a big apt family with different interests and excitement um, and that's why we need you most of all is to to bring to that you know bring to that family and uh, make it larger and, and better so I think that's mine and Declan's yeah. I don't know if he has anything else to say no, um, same, just, yeah, just looking forward to, to on, seeing so. new members of the apt family I think yeah because even we're new members so it'd be great to just new faces all the time can't wait exactly and I think uh, hopefully Jason's back on now so he can do the, uh, <laughs> the first part of the presentation, which was uh, meant to be what is apt. And so we've given you a little sneak peek of what you might do there and who we are. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, guys. Oh, say, thanks very much, chaps. I have no idea what happened there. Um, I've just spent the last 15 minutes talking to myself, apparently. So uh, there we are. <laughs> I thought it was very good anyway. <laughs> My four year old son thought it was very good. I think that's the best thing to say. Anyway, I think this is a clear demonstration that architects are creatively agile and very good at thinking on their feet. So where exactly did we get to before the tech failed us? Did we show anything at all? Uh, first page of the slide, please, Jason. <laughs> OK, right. Well, let's pray forgiveness from our audience that they're still with us and see if it goes again. OK. Can we see that, everybody? Yes, we can. OK, right. Well, can somebody uh, just sort of text me if it all dies on us again or something? Um, it'd be dreadful to talk it through to a blank screen yet again. OK, so here he goes. What are apt? Who are apt? What is this all about? Well, we are a studio, an architectural studio based in St. John Street in Islington. Uh, we are a studio of 45 people and growing. Um, we're a creative business full of architects and designers and creatives, and we are looking for people to join us as a growing and enthused and exciting business. We're also importantly an employee owned trust. I don't know if the chaps have mentioned it already, um, but it's an interesting and almost unique business model in that everybody who joins the business after one year becomes a partner and owner in that business. So you get to shape this business. You get to celebrate this business. And as this business does well, then you profit from that business doing well. Today, we're here to launch the apprenticeship scheme. Our apprenticeship and our apprentice joining us would, at the end of a year, become a partner and would be fully benefiting just like every other member of the APT family. Um, we're here today to talk about the apprenticeship and the apprenticeship is a really exciting initiative for us. What we're saying here today is that we are looking for a candidate to come and join us for a fully funded position in the studio, earning a good salary, benefiting from all of the things that all apt employees receive. 
but also alongside working as an employee of APT four days a week, one day a week for 30 days of the year, for four years, you'll be doing day release at the London University of South, London South Bank University on their architectural apprenticeship course. At the end of that four years, you would have a degree in architecture. This is a great way of actually gaining that professional qualification without any of the associated difficulties, the crippling debt, and all the other things that go with a traditional university architectural model. And we're here today to say, we would love to hear from you. We would love to hear from candidates who would be excited and would like to hear more about this particular initiative. This is what our studio is. It is a creative hub of like-minded individuals who collaborate, who work together, sketching, drawing, using the model shop, working with different materials. The world of architecture is truly about collaboration. The portfolio, some of it you'll have just seen from the chaps, is diverse and very exciting. Uh, we're an award-winning studio and we're very, very proud of the things that we design and work on. I heard Declan and Thomas there talking about our London Resort initiative over in Swanscombe. This is going to be an incredible thing for London and we're thrilled to be right in the middle of it. We're also working on multiple residential schemes, some in London, some out in different diverse places, Birmingham and Worcester and Coventry and all over the country. We're working on workplace, office space and the reimagining of office space, given what we're currently all going through. We're working on a number of student accommodation schemes. Uh, here are schemes both in London and again in the Midlands. We're also looking at projects across a variety of different sectors, from recreation, from the culture and arts, hotels, assisted living, etc. Projects come from a variety of scales. This is the Fulham Gas Works, which is an enormous project in the centre of London, all garnered around new public space and the world's oldest gasometer right at the middle of it. So this is an example of some of the large scale things that the business does. This is an illustration of a smaller scale project. This is the boutique spa from one of our projects, a very, very beautiful sort of health and recreation uh, building. And here is a private house which we've worked on. Uh, again, very beautiful, working with landscape, working with how you can integrate architecture into its contextual environment. As well as designing buildings, the interiors for buildings, we also enjoy designing the products of buildings, handrails, door handles, chandeliers, desks, furniture, chairs, all of these sorts of things. As a group of creatives, this is really what gets us excited. We're fascinated as well by materiality, the potentiality of materials, what we can do with old and new, what we can do with found and existing, and how we can give these a new lease of life. We have an initiative within the business called Apt Lab, which is exploring these very things and then bringing them into our buildings. You've heard me mention the word collaboration. That truly is, if you could describe architecture as anything, what architecture is. It is probably the world's greatest team sport and involves an enormous variety of different people, all from different skills and intellects, everybody all bringing their own wonderful, wonderful contribution. This is a collaboration that we did with a Terrazzo company, the reimagining of found materials into a new bench. As the chap said, come and join us. We'd be thrilled to hear from you. We launched today the initiative. We launched today our search for candidates, the brightest and the best, to come and join the Apt family and to learn to work with us, for us to learn from you and to explore the path to becoming an architect. There is a timeline associated with this. As of today, the job description and all of these presentations will be launched onto the website and available for your perusal. There is about a five week window where we'll be looking for candidates to fill in those application forms. It involves both a portfolio and also putting together some written content. The portfolio is a really important thing and Sammy in his presentation will talk about that in more depth. But in about five weeks time, the application window will close and then we will start to look through the candidates and start to shortlist those candidates. 
Then we'll have studio tours if we are able, given current circumstances. But if not, we'll find another creative way that we can spend some time together and tell you a little bit about the business. Then we'll be working with London South Bank on the selection process to hopefully get to the position in May where our candidate has a placement at London South Bank. And at that point, with a successful completion of getting your exam results, we can make that job offer to the candidate. Then you can enjoy your summer and come and join us in August or early September as a full time member of the business with your first day at university, your first day at college as an aspiring architect on the 20th of September. Uh, that is the journey and the path which we've sort of set out over the next eight or nine months. Uh, we are apt and would be thrilled to hear more from you. Hopefully everybody got to hear that this time. Yes. Some e yeah. <laughs> e e excellent. Right. So let's move on to Sammy, shall we? Thank you. Uh, I will just share my screen. OK. Can you see my screen? Excellent. No, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Have you just put something on? I can't. I see can it see it. Yet. You can see it. Oh yes, okay. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for having me here. It's really exciting, and I enjoyed um, listening to Declan Thomas and Jason speaking about APT and the exciting projects they work on and also you know the exciting careers but I have been involved with apprenticeships uh, especially the architecture ones at LSBU since the, uh, the time when they were approved by the government which was in 2018 to provide an alternative route um, just add to what Jason said you know to do to become a fully qualified architect is it might be very expensive if you go through the traditional route and this is a way for aspiring architects, creative people to join the profession without worrying about how much it will cost them to become an architect. So I'll speak about your apprenticeships uh, from an academic point of view. Uh, and I just want to introduce you initially to um, London South Bank. So we're based in Southwark and that's where you will be attending university. We've got um, some really good facilities there. So we've got laser cutting labs, we've got 3D labs, we've got um, materials and and everything is available for you at no cost as an apprentice at LSBU. We've been working with employers for over 130 years now, and we've always been a vocational university and institution. Uh, therefore, we began to, uh, to deliver apprenticeships in 2016 when the government introduced the high and degree level apprenticeships. And today we have over 2000 apprentices in uh, LSBU uh, doing 30 different apprenticeships. And um, specifically for architecture, we have 130 apprentices at LSBU, um, both at level six and seven apprenticeships. Um, because we uh, offer apprenticeships now, we were inspected by Ofsted and we achieved a good rating for uh, the provision that we offer. Um, essentially, the inspectors were happy with the quality of the teaching and everything that we do at uh, LSBU in regards to apprenticeships and the support we offer apprentices. Equality and diversity is really important because obviously London is one of the most diverse cities in the world. And as a provider, we would like to reflect our um, community. So we work with employers like APT in supporting them in ensuring there's a diverse workforce and we breaking down any barriers, whether they're really perceived in terms of apprenticeships. So over half of our apprentices are BME. Uh, there's also um, you know, a big proportion who are younger people, and I think 39% are female as well. And we have a lot of female apprentices in architecture as well. So please uh, don't let any of these barriers, if you have any questions, get in touch with APT or uh, the college or our, ourselves in LSBU. We will be able to support you throughout the process because we would like to see your applications. Um, just like colleagues spoke earlier, they want to see local people in the business so they can bring their creativity and the experience of living in London into the designs uh, that are done. And 
we have been successful as a university in the last year. So we were one of, uh, we were shortlisted for the BAME Apprenticeship Awards uh, 2020, and we were one of two universities on that list. And actually one of our apprentices, you can see him here, Romario, who he won the Construction Apprentice of the Year Award for the whole of the UK, which was a big achievement uh, for us and for him. Um, specifically about apprenticeships, um, so the basic concept is apprenticeship is a job with training. So you'll be employed, you'll have a contract of employment, and you'll be supported in your journey and your training. You'll have um, holidays, paid holidays, you'll have uh, all the other stuff that an employee will gain from being employed. You'll also have 20% of your time for what we call off the job learning. So you've got that protected time to learn whether it's in the job uh, at work or at university. So that will be part of your working week, which is a really important distinctive distinction between um, just a trainee job and an apprenticeship job. So, um, you know, you will be supported by not only uh, your employer, but us as a university, you'll have a skills coach who will work with you to develop these skills that you need to become an architect. And next, um, I wanted to just uh, explain the apprenticeship standard concept itself. So every apprenticeship has um, an apprenticeship standard behind it, which is set by employers. And what this means is that this apprenticeship, the skills you develop from the apprenticeship is what the employers want for that sector. So when you graduate, you will be what architect uh, employers are looking for, and hopefully you'll have a, you know, a long career in the sector with all the, the skills and the knowledge and behaviours you've developed over the four years. Specifically for your apprenticeship, it's a level six, so it's a degree level, and you'll be with us for four years, attending university one day per week during term time, so roughly about 30 days a year, you will be at LSBU, and um, you will learn variety of things and I'll speak about that in a little while. Um, when we circulate these apprenticeship, uh, these slides, um, I suggest look at the Institute for Apprenticeship links here so you just get familiar with the content of the apprenticeship itself and the kind of work that you work with because it's a, it's a varied uh, sector um, and this is just a snapshot of your journey on an apprenticeship. You, uh, you see on the left here, this is what you'll be doing on the program. So you'll be studying your degree, you'll be learning on the job from your employers, you'll be learning from you know, colleagues um, and developing the skills and behaviours. You'll be logging your training on your uh, on the system and then you'll reach what we call the endpoint assessment. And the endpoint assessment is where you will be expected to do a project and you do a presentation on that project. And if you're successful, you will achieve your degree in architecture, but you will also gain your part one which is really important in, in, in this sector. And this shows you uh, the modules you will study uh, over the four years. Um, you'll see in year one, there's a lot of emphasis on design. Uh, so you'll be spending a lot of time on the studio with a group of uh, colleagues, roughly around 15 uh, will be in a group. Um, you will be going on uh, trips together, to a few places, they could, you know, if, if we're back on campus, obviously, and things permit. Um, and then in the second year, you will go into more of um, a theory based uh, modules and you will be doing more of lecture kind of um, teaching. And then you go back into design again in year three and four, where you will rejoin the studio again. And hopefully by the end of the fourth year, by June, July, you would have completed your apprenticeship ready for your next stage. And this is just um, a quick uh, overview of the journey again and, and the endpoint assessment, which is really important. So you will be expected to do this presentation with a portfolio and this will give you the degree on part one. OK. Your teaching uh, over the next four years will be a combination of on the job and of the job training. So the of the job training at university, you will attend lectures, like I said, you'll be part of a studio. Uh, you'll be working in a group, designing, working on models, um, you'll be sketching and drawing, um, and all of that will contribute into your teaching. You have um, a course director who is very familiar with apprenticeships. The head of apprentice uh, architect as well in LSBU has been very involved, and we've just had our first three apprentices in level three complete successfully, and one of them got a distinction, the other two got and merits in their um, in their grades. Um, what are the benefits of doing an apprenticeship? Um, the top one for me, I think, is around job readiness, because if you do an apprenticeship, 
you will be training and learning while you are uh, studying at the same time. So by the time you complete your level six apprenticeship in four years time, you will have four years of uh, experience and practical experience. You will you would, uh, learn a lot more than just focusing on studying full time. You'll also obviously get paid. Uh, your fees will be uh, paid for you. Um, you don't have to contribute to the fees and, and they, they normally about 28,000 if you add uh, interest on that, etc. It's it, it adds up. You'll also um, meet other apprentices from other organizations. Like I said, we have 130 some from small, uh, practices, some from large practices, some from in, in London practices, some from outside of London. So you'll get to share that knowledge and experience between yourselves and learn from each other, which will really enrich your um, experience with us. As an LSBU student, uh, hopefully um, um, COVID permitting, We'll be back on campus in September. You'll have access to our Academy of Sport for free of charge. You'll have access to the SUNY Union, and there's lots of you know um, activities and groups you can join there. We have a 24-hour library in normal times. Also, if you live in London, you will be entitled to apply for the Apprentice Oyster Card, which will um, only for the 12 the first 12 months of your apprenticeship, and you will get 30% um, discount. There's also an Apprentice NUS Extra Card which gives you lots of discounts in restaurants and shops and stuff and so on. Um, there's also um, a lot of support and available to you as well. So um, due to COVID at the moment, we've increased our mental health and well-being support. Uh, we've got um, you know, uh, specialist teams that can deal with any issues um, and we can deal with them in confidence as well. So you will have the full experience of being a student at LSBU, but the benefit of being an apprentice and learning on the job. This is uh, one of our current architect apprentice, apprentices who's doing the level seven. Um, and I just wanted to share with you because it's a unique um, experience and what he's done in the last few months. Hopefully the technology will work, but let's see. I guess I've always been quite creative once my uncle asked me to build a birdhouse for him, I built this extremely elaborate and over-engineered bird box. My artistic license kind of got the better of me. I'm currently working on developing the design for an EV charge hub where electric vehicles can go and charge up their batteries. This is the first time that a full shell petrol station has been transformed into a, a full EV charge centre. As a keen cyclist, it's a real positive thing to work on a project that promotes more electric cars on the road. What the, the birdhouse journey taught me was keep designing, keep innovating, because architecture is just all about problem solving. Thanks to the innovation of people like Will, Shell's first electric only station in the UK is taking shape. OK, I hope you managed to see that, but Essentially, we want you in the future to be the well. So we want to do um, videos about your successes with APT. We want to share that with the world and, you know, and hopefully you can continue the culture of innovation that Jason spoke about in the business. Um, so obviously you'll have to apply for this. Uh, it's, it's a job. Uh, at the end of the day, the business is looking for good caliber candidates and applicants to join the business. Um, these are just few pointers, so please, before you make an application, read about the business, read about the sector, read about the skills and, and, and qualities required. Be prepared um, on the day, you know, dress appropriately, etc. Have, um, you know, um, the information you need for the interview. So make sure that you are fully prepared. Uh, look at example interviews, and I'm sure the college will assist you with that. And make sure that you talk about your experiences, no matter how small they are. You know, there's some things that I always mention to people. Um, if somebody's asking you about your experience in um, leading people or working in a team, when you are just finished college, how can you say, how can you talk about that? But if you played in a in, in football team, that's teamwork. You know, you can bring all these little experiences into your answers um, and make sure that you are positive about why you want to work for the business as well. So. 
try and think about your long term career goals and why you love architecture and your creativity and, and some of the things you worked on in the past. Um, it's really important that you look at the desired skills for the specific uh, apprenticeship here. So these are the things that you need to prepare before you go and apply for the job or before you go for the interview. You need to think about relevant answers to these um, uh, you know, uh, skills, how these have come from your, you know, your background, your, your, your work at college now, your work experience potentially, um, and, and bring that in, into the interview and your application. Um, for us as a university, we look at the equivalent of three uh, BBC at A-level uh, or DDM. Um, if your grades um, are a little bit below that, but you've got um, you know, the qualities the business is looking for, we will have a word with Jason and the team and we'll make a decision. Well, I'm not saying that if you don't get BBC, we won't look at your application, uh, but please try and aim high. Uh, you've still got a bit of time uh, in your journey. Um, try and um, what we'll do is we will look at your application with your predicted grades and we'll give you an offer based on that. And hopefully in August, uh, these grades will be confirmed. Now, the portfolio is also an important element for this apprenticeship. And what we look for is um, your artistic and creative abilities, really. So we're not essentially looking for you to be uh, a, a guru of the use of software in design. It's about the sketching, about the drawing skills that um, Declan and Thomas spoke about. Um, that's what we look for in your portfolio and we can share with you some guidance around what to include in the portfolio. If you need more information, uh, obviously we have, uh, there will be a link to our website here, but also Amazing Apprenticeships uh, is an organization that is set up by the government that has lots of resources for um, families, um, for uh, educators and for applicants as well. Um, I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a really important decision to make. Um, if um, any of your parents, for example, are unsure about the career prospects of apprenticeships, I'm happy to speak to them uh, on a one to one basis to explain to them the apprenticeship and, and the, all the successes that we've seen from apprentices so far um, and the long term prospects of doing an apprenticeship. Um, they obviously there will be lots of uh, stories that you can read as well online. But I wanted finally to share another video with you, which is although not architecture, but it's about successes of some of our other apprentices. And these are um, the building services awards for this year, which were um, the top three in the country were all LSBU apprentices. Um, OK. thing about being in this role is the feeling of reward that you get from the work that you do. No matter where you are in the country, in the world, has new challenges which require innovative solutions. Being a building services engineer is an exceptional career where you can make a difference in so many ways. I'm helping to provide a better future by educating our clients and peers to always go the extra mile in terms of carbon reduction in a socially responsible way. Okay, so the reason I brought this in because these apprentices could be your clients of the future because um, architects do the design and the building services work, uh, designers work with architects to uh, you know, provide the solutions within these businesses, uh, buildings. So, um, you know, an, an RIBA, um, I had a meeting with them, the, the body for architecture, uh, looking at similar schemes in the future, similar awards for apprentices, etc. So we would like to be able to put you forward for awards 
next year and beyond. Um, and um, like I said, we are here at LSVU. Um, I have a team of 12 people who are all our all we do is support apprentices in their journey and making sure that you feel you're part of a team that you've got this additional support available for you at, at any stage of your journey. And I would recommend that you look at the job, you apply as soon as you can, and we hopefully see you in September at LSVU. Thank, thank you so much, Sammy. Uh, it was uh, incredibly clear and covered a huge amount of data and information uh, in a very succinct way. So thank you. Um, thank you for everybody who's been listening. Thank you for your perseverance with the tech and the rather abstract and out of sequence. But um, there we go. Uh, you sort of have to freestyle it in this world from time to time. Um, that's exactly I, I it, Jason. <laughs> So, sorry, that's, Ravinda. That's, um, that's exactly it. That's how we have to <laughs> run these sessions. Uh, Thank you. It, it, exactly right. Um, I guess, is there any questions? I mean, I imagine people are completely sort of subsumed at the moment by a wealth of information, but everything is live as of now. Everything is on the system, I believe. And we're here to take any questions in due course, even if it's not now but there'll be follow-ups, uh, we're all ears. Well, I've just been having a look at the chat, um, Jason, and um, I haven't received any questions. Um, if anyone has got any questions, please let me know. Or as Jason said, they are free to answer questions at the end after the presentation. Um, what I was hoping to do, Jason, as well, is to send this recorded version out to the uh, tutor group so that they can have a look at it in their own time. And I will ask them to let me know as well. Oh, OK. So I've just had one question there. And that's, um, just bear with me. Let's have a look. OK, so from Georgina, uh, she's asked, do you have small programs for the first year college students? Do you have anything? for the first year students in a BTEC level three program. So in a level three program, you usually have, it's a, it's a two year program. If anybody wants to answer that. I think, um, Jason, I think it's worth, uh, worth considering having um, uh, like um, a work experience program for people in the first year. And these, these people will be your feeder people for the actual apprenticeship in the following year when they complete their level three. Mm -hmm. So you could you could say we're having a you know work experience during Easter break or summer holiday for someone uh, to come and, and, and join the practice and shadow people or work on you know small stuff. And then next year they can apply to the apprenticeship when they complete. So that gives them a flavor of uh, the app. Uh, well. It sounds very, very similar to some of the things which we're currently doing, Sammy, in terms of internal initiatives, working with local schools, people coming to join us for a couple of weeks. We set them small tasks. They work on live projects. They get to wear all of the PPE and go to uh, building sites and attend meetings, etc. So, yes, of course, that would be something we'd be very interested to talk to somebody about, listen to what people's thoughts are and to see if there is an accommodation there. Just to add to that, so our previous um, method of, of doing such a thing was called the WEX program, which is our work experience program, which we've run over a number of years. Sadly, last year we were not able to, um, but we are thinking to bring this up again, even if it's not in the same form as it has been in previous years. And what we do is we advertise the WEX program via our social media pages. So there'll probably be a poster on Instagram or in LinkedIn, and there'll be something on our websites to say that the WEX program is going to be open, which particular dates it is, and then a, um, a method for application. So keep an eye on our website and have a look on our Instagram or a possible summer program of WEX. OK, thanks for that. That's great. Um, just really quickly, did you have a link for for students, how they can apply for the vacancy as well? Uh, yes, we yes, we do. Chat, I wonder. Um, it might be prudent for me um, 
we put up a, a list of what we call the next steps. Why don't I actually see if I can share this with the screen, which may answer just some of the um, bubbling under thoughts that people have. Let's see if tech doesn't, uh, let's see if it's our friend this time. One second. So while we're just waiting for Jason, uh, just to let you know that um, I will forward this um, presentation out to the rest of the groups here at CBAT. OK. Um, can we see that, everybody? Yeah. OK, great. So we put together what we thought were, uh, there's only about two or three pages here, so don't worry, it's not death by uh, PowerPoint or slideshow. Um, Really, the sort of questions which we thought people may have, you know, how do I apply for this position? Uh, it's on the APT website. It's on the website for LSBU. It's also on the National Apprenticeship website. Um, what are we looking for? Well, Sammy alluded to it. Um, enthusiasm, talent, self-motivation. Um, we're looking for people who have a keen desire in architecture or the built environment, people who love drawing, who have inquisitive minds. Um, you know, my own education began with Lego and all of those sorts of things. Uh, we're looking for people who can sketch and paint and draw. There are no right answers here. We're just looking for those who ooze creativity. Um, what happens after you've applied? We'll be looking to shortlist, as we said, some, uh, some very strong candidates. We'll be talking to them. We'll be trying to introduce them into the studio, if possible. We'll be showing them around. They'll be, be meeting some of our clients. Um, Key question, when would you know if you've got the job so that you can actually plan ahead and think about what comes next? Um, May 2021, we think, is the starting point for that. Sammy beautifully covered the sorts of grades that we need. I think it was a BCC or a BBC. Um, so good, strong grades in and around those, uh, those sorts of categories. And of course, with no exams this year, then we can all work on coursework and sort of work on that portfolio. Um, we talked about the folio and the strength of the folio, and Sammy has actually covered what the apprenticeship course entails. Key question, how much would you get paid? Well, the starting salary would be uh, £18,137 and a grand 60 pence, I'm told. Uh, you will get paid holidays, of course. You will get that day release. You will become an employee of the business, of course, but a partner of the business, as we mentioned, after a year. As a partner after a year, you then get to share in dividends and bonuses and all of those sorts of things, which are added on to the other salient things. If you get the job, when would you start? August stroke early September, and it would be a four year tenure to get to the degree. Um, I think that we thought would have been, could have been some of the key questions that come from this forum. Hopefully they are helpful. That's really helpful, Jason. Um, somebody did ask me about this um, vacancy, whether they needed to apply via UCAS. No, uh, no, apprenticeships are not covered by UCAS. So, yeah, they will apply um, this. They can apply either directly through APTA's website or it will be live on the National Apprenticeship, uh, Final Apprenticeship uh, page as well that will will link to that later so yes it's not you Cass. okay brilliant and um, i'm just uh, conscious of the the time we've got left we've just got a few minutes left um i think we'll uh, close the presentation now but i just wanted to quickly thank sammy and the app team um very quickly for all their um hard work in producing this um wonderful presentation and as i said i will uh, forward this out to the rest of the tutors uh, and the students. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. See you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.